Hi, my name is Tom from Genius Gecko, and welcome to another big picture update. This time we will be looking at 8.5, a pretty darn good version, lots of changes, lots of work for us because we will have to update our video training quite significantly to accommodate all of those. But all in all, it's again a huge step forward in terms of usability, user interface, and basically easier access to lots of interesting functionalities, plus a few new ones to top it up to top it out with. All right, let's begin. So the first one that I want to mention and get it out of the way is the administration part. This is basically, basically the global administration for the plugin, the general and task section. This is a place where you can set the mapping of standard Jira fields that will be used to store some of the important values that Big Picture is using along the way, like start and end dates, baselines, um, story point fields, for example, milestones, team codes, and so on, right? So now, whenever you install the plugin and start it up, the first time that admin accesses it, he or she will see a window with exactly this information so that this mapping can be done to begin with so that later on you don't have to change it along the way while you're already working with your data and then maybe you have to migrate some values from some fields to others. I think it totally makes sense. Now going back to Big Picture main screen, uh, which is called home screen of course, there is a new section that has been added over here as well and this new section allows for an easier start with Big Picture as well, so it's another improvement in that direction. This section is basically hidden over here, so you can collapse it with this arrow or expand it with it. And it allows you to play with sample data, so you can choose what kind of uh, environment you want to play with, and it will create for you a box with um, sample data. The sample data is not Jira data, it's actually based on basic tasks, so it doesn't uh, trash out your Jira instance in any, um, in, in any extent. Therefore, you can easily play around with the data and uh, see what is what without being afraid that you will mess things up. The second one allows you to import Jira projects into Big Picture. So basically, you choose your Jira projects over here and you can select multiple of them and then you select what type of the box you would like to create. Um, you can also choose to create separate Agile projects for each Jira project. So if you have multiple selected over here, you can either put them into one box or Check this, so that multiple boxes, one for every Jira project from the field up here, will be created. So that's also quite easy. Of course, later on you will have to configure uh, the projects or the boxes further if you uh, want some additional changes to be done. But that at least takes care of the basic scope configuration for you, right? And the last one also allows you to create a portfolio, which is basically a simple shortcut to just clicking the plus button over here and choosing the portfolio, there, is, there it is, portfolio type of the box over here. So that one is pretty easy to use. Of course, the portfolio will allow you to manage um, your data on a higher level than your standard, Jira, uh, standard big picture boxes are. And now the next one is, I think, a big change. And I'm pretty happy that it has been introduced because previously, when you wanted to create a new box and you didn't have Big Picture Enterprise version, which, as many of you probably know, doubles the cost of Big Picture, you only had three box types to choose from. Program type of the box, um, program increment, and iteration. Now, Big Picture is allowing all of us to use all of the other different types of the predefined different types of the box types that were previously available only to Big Picture Enterprise users. So that's pretty big. You still cannot create new box types if you want to, but you can reuse more pre-configured templates available now in standard Big Picture. So um, I think this is, uh, this is really great for many of you that don't have Big Picture Enterprise version. The next small thing rather is contextual help available. So if, for example, go to the configuration and you want to have a look at some of the things that are available over here and maybe you will spot something that requires a little bit more 
a little bit more in-depth knowledge, you will find a question mark over here. And previously it was just taking you or linking you to the wiki page uh, for the documentation of the picture. Now it's shown over here in this kind of contextual mode, which saves us probably a click or two, uh, which is always nice. Now the next one is actually more interesting. So if you go to an overview uh, module of any box that you're looking at, including the home box, you will now find that there is a column view definition available over here, which allows you to create several different views for you to check out. So if you want to, in different cases, have different values available here in those views, that's exactly what this is for. It works exactly as the column views in a Gantt chart, uh, column views in the scope module. So if you are familiar with those, you will be able to use those without any problems. I will also mention at this point that it nicely connects with uh, another feature that has been added that allows you to, if you go to the configuration of your home box and then to the overview, you will find that you are now able to also add custom fields to the overview module. This is cool. This is really cool because I have been hoping for this to come for a long time and now it's finally here. You can just click plus here, enter the name, select the type of the field. As, as you can see, there are only four types available now and create one. So I already did. I created the theme name, uh, which is a string type of the field for myself. And now if I go to an overview, I can show this field. So I can, for example, we can switch from custom view to my essentials. Let's say that it's, it's a very essential field for me. I can go over here, say that I want to see the theme name and it should have a value for one of the boxes that I have on the list over here. And that's exactly this one. My demo box is a next gen projects theme. So now I can capture this information. And of course, all of that um, information in those custom fields have to be entered manually, but still, but still, if you want to manage uh, your boxes with some custom values, this is exactly what I was looking for. Awesome. Another thing that is available on the overview screen is in sorting. So previously you had these sorting options over here, but now you can also use the manual one. This one was missing here before. Now you can also use the manual, which allows you to then manually, so as, as, as you want basically, order the boxes around the overview view, be it in the home screen or be it in the overview in a specific other box. So that's pretty cool because lots of you probably are working in a way that maybe the standard sorting doesn't really fit your needs and then you can switch to manual and arrange things however you want. Now let's switch for a moment to a Gantt chart. There are some changes over there as well. Uh, no tasks to be displayed over here, of course, before, because we need to switch to our, our demo box. So on a Gantt chart, there is a change regarding the search box over here in the filters area, right? So standard filters will look like this. If you switch to the search, you will have this window to enter the text in. I've, I've just entered test over here to see how it works. And basically it allows you now to snipe to result. If you click this, it will highlight one of the tasks that belong to the filter result. And then over here, you can scroll through those results just by pressing those arrows, uh, which is pretty convenient um, to, to, to say so. Uh, it also has another option over here, but for now only in the scope module. So I kind of expect that if there will be positive feedback regarding that, it will also come to the Gantt module and it basically allows you to hide all the, all the entries that are semi-transparent, which do not belong to the filter, but are shown here for the reference purposes. Another thing, that is available on the Gantt is in the Show Hide Resources panel. So if you open this panel, it shows you your resources with tasks assigned to them. And you can see um, the resource information over here in terms of the resource allocation. Of course, you can change the aggregation, for example, to weekly, but you can also change the effort mode. And what has been added over here is the story point. So previously it's been missing here. It's been only available in the resources module. Now it's also visible over here. Talking about resources, let's switch to that module for a moment because over there, a new 
small feature has been added as well. If you look at your uh, time frame and your allocations, when you right click on the allocation on a specific day, you can now choose from over here to add an absence for this specific user. And then you have to select the absence type or absence reason. The dates are pre-populated for you automatically. And you also get an option of um, registering a half day absence. So that's pretty cool because, you know, it happens that somebody is not gone for the whole day, but maybe um, has to go to the doctor with, with the child and will be off just for half a day. So now this option is also available over here. Uh, and it's also available in other settings, general settings that allow you to add absences. Uh, so not only on this screen, but basically everywhere where you create an absence definition. Moving on to the board module. Let's visit the board module and I think we will have to switch the box. Yes, we will. So I've created a new PI in my demo box. It's called PI6. Let's switch to this one. And this one doesn't have any iteration in, in it. So uh, then it, it, it basically, Big Picture is asking me to create those iterations. I can either create them manually or I can now synchronize it with the Jira board. And if I click this, I get to choose the board that I want to or should synchronize with. And I will just choose one of those. Doesn't really matter because I'm not going to follow up with it. Then you choose the, it, the, the box type that is supposed to be created. Normally under the program increment, it will be iteration, but you might have a different one. And then it reads all the sprints that are um, available in the board that I've selected over here. And for all of those that are OK, it will tell me that uh, there is a green tick over here. And by hitting create, I will just create a list of boxes now that will be automatically uh, linked in terms of the scope to those sprints. So that's pretty cool. It might happen that the board, for example, will have sprints that will uh, not be possible to synchronize like that, but you will also get a nice explanation. The sprints period is overlapping with other boxes and apparently the box settings of the iteration, yeah, that's exactly how it is set in my instance, don't allow for overlapping. So for these sprints, the boxes cannot be created. Makes total sense. Another thing that is available here on the board module, let me switch to my demo box again, is the inline creation of tasks from the backlog. So on the right hand side, you have the backlog information. If you click over here now on this plus sign, you will see a standard Jira issue create window that will allow you to add a new task to the box. Now moving on to the scope, just to show you the thing that I've already mentioned, when you apply the filters over here in the scope module, and let's say that I will say test again, I can now go over here and hide parent tasks. So as you can see, no semi-transparent tasks are available over here because hide parent tasks is enabled. There is also a new big picture enterprise feature, which is a big step forward, I think. If you go to tasks and scope definition, now you will also be able to add a new integration over here. And previously it worked just with Trello, but now Jira Cloud is no longer grayed out and you can connect another Jira Cloud instance you have to, of course, create a connection for it uh, through the administration and then connect it. I haven't tested it fully, so I'm not sure exactly how this will work. This is something that we have to explore a little bit further. It's too early after the version release. But I think this is going to be very useful for those of you that have big, large instances of cloud um, of Jira Cloud or Jira Server or Jira Data Center that are spread out into several um, instances and not aggregated in one big one. So I, I expect that this will have value just to a handful of big picture customers, but for those, it will be a pretty crucial one because it, it will allow them to combine the view of their portfolio or program planning in one place. Jumping next to the report section, you will find that there is a new report available over here. If you hit edit and plus, there will be a plan delays report. It's available again for big picture enterprise users only. This is what it looks like. It basically shows you uh, on the report screen over here the uh, issues that are delayed in terms of their um, baseline end date 
and you will be able to quickly find out where your attention is needed. It's not exactly the same as the delayed tasks on the Gantt, because the delayed tasks on the Gantt don't really rely on the baseline field, but this one does. And then there are some smaller changes. So, for example, if you click this wrench icon, you will see that it looks a little bit different. It has more handy shortcuts now to many um, areas of the administration or configuration. So this will save us a click or two, I think. Next, the roadmap module has been renamed and now it's just named Objectives. So you will see objectives basically instead of the roadmap. I think it's better. I think it's better because I've been always saying during the training sessions that this is basically a tool for objective-based planning and objectives sound a lot more accurate over here rather than the roadmap. So I love this one. It's more universal. Something that might be of big interest to some of you is that two new fields have been added that we can now use, for example, in a Gantt or in a scope module as additional fields. And I know from, you know, all the consulting that we're doing and the training that there are people that have been asking for it for a long time. It's especially useful for those of you that are migrating from Microsoft Project because you might be used to having them, but I think it's super useful for everyone. And the fields I, I have in mind is uh, duration, in calendar days and duration in working days. So now you can have both of those values available over here. One or another might be, or both of them might be very useful to some of you, I'm pretty sure. Apart from that, you will find in several different places some more functionalities allowing you to inline edit things. So that's always welcomed. There is also a new field being added for the box that tells you how long the box has been inactive for. So you will be able to spot the boxes that are inactive for a long time and maybe move them to the ar um, uh, archived boxes. You can now also add new tasks or new Jira issues straight from the resources module that hasn't been here before. So you can easily do it from here. You can also jump to manage scope definition from here, a shortcut that should be already pretty known to most of you. And I think the last tiny change that is worth mentioning is that now when you're um, copying teams from boxes, you not only can copy the team from an upper box, but also from a lower box. So it works basically the same. You just copy the team from a lower box, which probably is pretty handy from time to time. And all in all, this is all for 8.5. Quite a lot of stuff, isn't it? Um, and I'm very happy that Big Picture is still evolving quite rapidly and bringing all the needed, really, very needed features to the tool and making the tool more and more user-friendly, which will definitely help in broad adoption of it. So I think it's a great step forward again. I really love that team. Now, uh, finishing this, if you would be interested in learning how Big Picture works, we have a free Big Picture course available. It's around three hours of video materials. You will find the link uh, to this course in the description. This course will help you figure out whether this tool is for you. It will help you figure out how to kick off with the tool and start working with it. It goes through some basic scenarios of uh, starting off, whether you're working waterfall or working agile, or maybe somewhere in between, we go through a step-by-step -step, uh, guide that basically shows how to start planning your tasks or issues and how to later on monitor them and follow the progress so that you can take your first steps in the picture. And if you will be interested in any other services regarding this beautiful tool, we basically do everything around it, starting from uh, complete and um, very comprehensive training, finishing with helping you implement the tool, make the right choices, pick up the right configuration and drive the adoption so that when you're introducing something of this importance in your company, it's a guaranteed success. So all the important links will be in the description of this video. And right now, I only want to thank you for watching it till the end and hopefully see you in some next videos. Cheers.